President Biden is making several major announcements on the second day of the U.N. Climate Change Conference. The efforts he's pushing include reducing methane emissions, conserving force, and addressing infrastructure needs around the world. But he's planning to reveal these plans as the U.S. government is struggling to agree on climate change and infrastructure initiatives at home. For analysis of the conference so far, I want to bring in Elise Labitt. She's a columnist for Foreign Policy Magazine and the founder of Zivi Media. It's good to see you, Elise. How are you? Good to see you. So the White House says the president is working with the EU on a global methane pledge to reduce emissions by 2030. Ninety countries have signed on so far. How significant is that number? And for our viewers to understand, what does it mean when you sign on versus what you actually do? Well, I mean, that's exactly the point, Vlad. I mean, at a lot of these conferences, the pledges are massive and you get this great international camaraderie and spirit. And then, you know, some of the pledges don't really necessarily come through, like the deforestation pledge that we saw yesterday, cutting deforestation. Um, there was a pledge in 2014 and that didn't really go through. But this, the U.S. is set with President Biden any moment to announce measures to prevent millions of tons of greenhouse gases from entering the atmosphere, targeting that methane from leaking from oil and, and gas rigs. And, you know, it's it's very significant, um, a broad expansion and strengthening of the measures. And it follows through on this executive order that President Biden signed his first day in office. And we know that methane is one of the most potent greenhouse gases. So the U.S. and European Union together to cut by 30 percent um, by 2030. And, and it's pretty significant. It's responsible for a third of the current warming from human activities. Um, you mentioned this uh, deal with uh, deforestation um, and that, you know, they hammered out one already before that they didn't really fulfill. Leading up to this, we've been talking a lot about the president's own domestic agenda and whether or not if he couldn't convince his own party to sign on to putting, you know, their money where their mouth is when it comes to uh, climate change, how on earth was he going to convince other world leaders to do the same thing? Do you think the slow rolling, the hiccups, his failures, if you will, with his own domestic agenda when it comes to climate change had an impact on his influence overseas? I mean, I got to be honest, Dan. I don't really think at this point it's whether President Biden, you know, looks for the international community to do something. Yes, John Kerry, his special envoy, former secretary of state, has been traveling the world, cajoling, trying to get that international commitment. But I think, you know, you've heard U.N. Secretary General Gutierrez and, and others say, you know, this is really an existential crisis for the world. So, you know, the countries who've signed the pledge, Canada, Brazil, Russia, China, Indonesia, um, you know, cover around 80 85 percent of the world's forests. And these are countries that know that they're really going to need to tackle it. I think where people aren't so clear about is what the U.S. commitment to some of the funding that'll go to those developing countries to restore damaged land, tackle wildfires, and support those indigenous communities. But like, look at Brazil, where, you know, stretches of the Amazon rainforest have been cut down for them to sign, I think is really significant. So I think for President Biden, it's not necessarily about only getting other countries to join, but it's about the commitment to U.S. leadership that's really in question. Hmm. Um, mm. Yeah. So so that's I think at least that is really an important point. Um, and when you look at the number of leaders that are there, though, how significant for you is it that Xi Jinping isn't there? Vladimir Putin isn't there? I mean, presumably you can get him on a Zoom. We've all been doing that for the last two years to sign on to this. But how committed are those countries um, to these plans that are being discussed uh, at uh, this uh, big summit? And India. We haven't talked a lot about India, but India is probably number three or four in terms of emissions around the world. And they are there. That's right. I mean, look, we still have to remember that we're in a pandemic. You know, Russian President Vladimir Putin opted not to attend. Um, he cited concerns about the pandemic. And so it's, you know, kind of hard to question people on that. You know, Kremlin said that the Russian government considers climate one of the greatest priorities. Um, although, you know, Russia has been cited for clo for slow progress. President Xi, as you said, not attending in person, submitting this written statement that, you know, called on developed nations to take action, but didn't include a new pledge on climate action. And China is considered one of the largest emitters. So, I mean, I think it does raise questions 
among the attendees raising about their commitment to lowering greenhouse gas emissions, which is really, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in the conference, whether it's on, you know, deforestation or, you know, don't forget a lot of President Biden, what he's going to be talking about today with the G7 is about this build back better world, which is trying to compete with China on their One Belt, One Road initiative um, to help developing countries with their infrastructure, but from a more environmentally sustainable way. So there are a lot of, you know, political kind of machinations around why China might not be there. Um, but clearly China not making that pledge um, with it, when they're one of the largest emitters of greenhouse gases, I think is most significant. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about sort of the developed country's investment in the developing world. President Biden hosted a meeting with European Commission uh, president and several G7 leaders about any sort of major infrastructure investments needed around the world. How significant is this meeting? Um, you know, what will it mean for actual progress on infrastructure in these developing countries? Well, I mean, I think President Biden, this is part of his competition with China, right? It's really just about the one, as I said, the One Belt, mm. One Road initiative. What China does is is investing billions and billions of dollars into infrastructure in these countries. Um, but the cost of that investment is really high for those countries. Um, you know, basically, they're using a lot of uh, political um, blackmail in terms of those countries. They're not really kind of green in terms of some of the values driven high standard and transparency um, that are financing those mm -hmm. projects. And so what President Biden has argued is that if you go with the United States and the European Union, this is a, a much more safer, much more healthy investment for these countries. Um, I think, you know, there are a lot of different projects and a lot of different strategies going on among the U.S. and the EU so, you know, I'm at Foreign Policy. We've done a good bit on how, you know, wide and varied and and kind of unorganized this effort is on an alternative to infrastructure. So I think it remains to be seen whether it's going to be able to compete with China. That money is quick, fast and relatively easy to get. Well, Elise Lavitt, thank you so much. You bet.